Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and today I want to talk about TSLY, which comes to us from YieldMax, which is an appropriate name for this family of funds. After all, TSLY is currently yielding 68%, which draws a lot of people in. But TSLY is all about Tesla, and they've got a host of other ones in this family. For example, they've got one for NVIDIA, one for Apple, and a bunch more coming our way. So if you like what you see here, you might go and explore the rest of these funds. So the interesting thing here is when we talk about TSLY being about Tesla, it doesn't actually contain any Tesla. It's the uh, margarine of Tesla ETFs, right? Nothing in there. So it's all about options and the strategy. So we have to make heads or tails of this and see if it makes sense. So if that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Whoop. TSLY began trading last November in 2022, so it is currently less than one year old. They've got about $600 million of assets under management. They take all that money and they invest it into Tesla options, utilizing their strategy, which we will talk about. With that, they generate a lot of yield and they distribute that out every single month. So a lot of people like that monthly distribution idea. This is one of those. But for that, they do charge you 0.99%, let's call it 1%, to uh, manage this ETF. Now it is active management, but that is still pretty steep for compared to a lot of the ETFs that we, we talk about, that is at the very high end, uh, compared to a financial advisor that's in line with actually having a financial advisor. So can we hold them accountable? Well, sort of, they're gonna make decisions on when and how to trade these options, but at the same time, it is on an individual holding. So you're the one deciding if you like Tesla or not. That's really up to you and how that performs. But with all that information given, let's jump in and take a look at the website and exactly how this option strategy works. So at the YieldMax website, we do get to see some fancy glossy images of their offerings along with some of their up and coming funds. They are growing their lineup, so you might find what you're looking for here at a future date. And the first thing to understand is that whichever one of these you pick, whether it's the ARK Innovation ETF, Tesla, Apple, or NVIDIA, you have to have a bullish long-term view on the underlying stock. If not, don't buy this, just like you would not buy the stock. Now, obviously, the distribution rates are very impressive, and that's one of the reasons that people are interested in these, but uh, that's not going to be tax efficient. If it isn't a taxable account, something to consider. You're going to be receiving all that income and paying tax on that, so it might be better in a retirement account. And uh, one other thought here is that, uh, you know, as these funds grow, the fund could run into some liquidity issues, especially if they dominate the option volume in a particular area. Like, let's say for the ARK Innovation Fund, where I would not, I, I would doubt their option volume is all that high. That might be something to think about. Uh, they might run into some problems there working with their market makers. So let's take a look now at the holdings because that's what it really is going to boil down to to see what tesla would do if we handed them a hundred thousand dollars right keep that in mind let's say we just tossed a hundred k into tsly now what happens and all of those answers are going to be in their option strategy so let's go click into tsly and take a look at exactly what they have down here when it comes to their holdings so with your $100,000 investment, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to go invest it. They're going to put it into cash. That's actually what they're doing. And that's one of the cool things about this option strategy. Just like uh, if you kept $100,000 on the sideline and you started selling puts against it, you still have that cash position, maybe sitting in a money market account earning some money. And that's what's kind of unique about this kind of setup with the synthetic long position. They can keep that cash sitting here. They also have a little bit of cash on hand, and then the rest of this is going to be the base. Okay, the base of their strategy is a synthetic long position, and we can see that here with this set at 225 strike price. Let's have this 225 down here. They've got 44.20 that they've sold and they've bought. So these are purchase calls. These are sold puts. Okay. And with Tesla right now sitting at $245 a share, they're looking pretty good with this set right here, right? Because these call options that they bought are now worth quite a bit. The put option contracts are worth very little. So they've participated in the upside going from 225 up to 245 where it sits right now. But they're also being punished right now because they've got a synthetic long position here at 265 with a lot more contracts, 20,000 at 265 and the puts down here that they've sold at 265. So 
uh, these uh, calls are not worth that much now. These puts are expensive to get out of, right? This $43 million, that's expensive. So again, they participated in the decline in the stock from 265 down to 245. So if you took these 20,000 contracts times that $20 difference between the current price and that price from now, times 100, you'd get close to about $40 million. The rest of that would be extrinsic value that's still in the option premiums, right? So that's the whole thing here. And we're gonna, we're, we'll dive into this a little bit more. We'll break this down because I know that synthetic long kind of idea is very confusing to people. So let's think about that in a little more depth. And I almost forgot to mention the second most important part of this whole strategy. The first is we're setting up that synthetic long position, but the second is just like a regular covered call, except our money is kept over here in cash. So instead of being in stock, it's in cash. But since we have a synthetic long position, we can sell calls against that position now, just like a covered call to reduce our basis and maybe to capture a little bit of income. And you can see that here, with these 22,350 contracts with about $12 million riding on that this week. So we'll see how that shakes out this week. But that's the option premium that you're hoping to collect if they get that out of the money sold call correct. So we'll uh, jump into this again and, and break out down both of these steps right now. So let's think about this option strategy from the position of an investor that just plunked down $100,000 into TSLY, a nice round number. Now a typical covered call where we buy the shares so that we can sell a call against it with TSLA trading it around $250 a share would cost us $25,000 to buy 100 shares to sell a call against that position. And that eats up a lot of cash right up front. Now is that yield max worthy? Heck no. How about uh, PMCC or what is known as a poor man's covered call where we buy a deep in the money call to act as if we own 100 shares so that we can sell calls against that. I, you know, I looked up a 1210 expiration here out about three to four months with an 80 delta and it was going to cost around $5,900. Now that is certainly less capital compared to the classic covered call, but it does come with its own risks. You know, is that yield max worthy? Certainly not. And I'll link a video about a poor man's covered call if you're looking for that type of information or that type of trade. But that leads us to what is yield max worthy? The synthetic long position where we buy an at the money call and sell and at the money put. Now this setup gives us control of those 100 shares, but with very little cost since the price of the call should be about equal with the credit from writing the put option. While it likely isn't gonna be zero, it should be relatively close depending on the underlying and the position at which you sell this put and call or buy this call and sell this put. Now, does this allow us to control more shares you know, compared to a regular covered call? No, don't think that for a second. But it does allow our cash to sit in a money market account, right? Sitting there collecting 5%, right? That's a nice perk these days, especially in a stock that does not pay a dividend. So now let's think about how this synthetic long position actually works. Currently, a 90-day expiration at the money long call would cost me around $2,400 for Tesla. And at the money short put would give me a credit of around $2,400. So the credit offsets and we spend no money uh, to set this up. So let's assume Tesla is at $250 a share right now. and We have 90 days out till expiration. And as you will see, we are a full participant in whatever happens to the stock with a position like this. It's just like owning the stock. That's really important to understand. Now, three things can happen over the next 90 days with our base synthetic long position. The stock could go up in value, which is our hope since we're a participant. Let's say it goes up to 260 bucks a share. In this case, at expiration, we would have a call option that would be worth a thousand dollars and the put option would be uh it would expire worthless in long math terms down here we've got the long call that we purchased for twenty four hundred dollars would now only have intrinsic real value so if we exercised or rolled this option it'd have about a thousand bucks so we technically lost fourteen hundred dollars on the call side even though it went up but we kept all the option premium on the put side and that option expired out of the money so altogether we made a thousand bucks however you want to understand it whatever works best for you so that's a good result from our synthetic long position again we participate in those ten dollars of it going up in value now the second thing is that the stock trades sideways right till expiration meaning all options expire without value 
Now, in this case, we made nothing on the synthetic long position, and this should be a fine result for this fund since the calls that we're gonna be selling later on in step two will add income, whereas if you just own the stock, it's yielding nothing, right? So that's one of the perks here. Now, the third option, of course, is the one we wanna avoid, and that's a decline in the stock. If the stocks was to drop to, let's say, 235 bucks a share, for example, we'd lose $1,500, just like owning the stock. The call would be worthless, so you're out that 2,400 bucks, but you would make $900 on the put option for an overall loss of $1,500. Again, whatever works best for you. So now that we understand our base, right, the synthetic position, which I would call step one, all we have to do is add step two, which is to sell out of the money calls to protect premium during this 90 day period. Now, the folks over at YieldMax, they, they can pick different expirations along the way. They can do whatever they think is best. It is a managed ETF with traders over there. But by selling out of the money, they should have more winners than losers, right? Uh, with the winners providing clean, clean, I call it clean, clear premium to distribute and the losers capping the upside on the stock. And that is it. That's the option strategy. So now with this understanding of how this strategy works, if we are a Tesla bull, by the way, I am not, I'm not a Tesla bull. I'm more of an Nvidia bull actually. But uh, if we were to look year to date at a chart, we're gonna see that Tesla has been on a tear, right? This year it's up 126% while TSLY is up 7%. But that's not considering all the different option premium that we've received that's been paid out. So if we look at total return with, the with all those distributions added back in, TSLY is up a very respectable 65%, which I would happily sign on the dotted line for every single year. So the interesting part will be to see when there is an extended pullback in the stock or when the stock trades sideways for a period and how the two compare because 2023 has been a nice, nice run for Tesla. Now, once that occurs, you should see the option strategy start to smooth out the ride as those sold call options offset some of the losses in the stock price. And we should see that gap narrow between the two. So yeah, not a bad fund. I mean, it's not something that I'd be worried about owning, but if you're really a Tesla bull, which would you rather have the stock or the option strategy. So if you're here to see if this fund is safe, yes, it is. It is a simple covered call strategy that uh, a lot of people would deploy uh, with something like Tesla. And finally, let's take a quick look at the dividend history or distribution history, we should say, of this ETF, TSLY. Now, for a ETF that's trading for $15 a share, you can see these are quite substantial. So a good probably strategy would be to reinvest these dividends or the bulk of them back into TSLY or into TSLA, depending on how you want to do it. But you can see $15 a share right now, and you can get a dollar dividend on that. That's quite substantial every single month. A dollar, 90 cents, 90 cents, 83 cents. Something happened back here in May, 44 cents, back up to 80 cents, a dollar seven and 83 cents. So quite substantial compared to the stock price. Uh, or the ETF price. So uh, something that you want to take into consideration with how you're going to utilize this income. And in many ways, if you want to mirror what TSLA is actually doing, uh, you would want to reinvest these dividends either back into TSLY or right into Tesla, depending on the situation. So a couple of thoughts about TSLY and the rest of the family of funds here from YieldMax. My first one is if you are long, be long. So if you love Tesla in this case, and you're gonna be in it for five or 10 years, buy the stock, I think it's the best way to go. For me, I like Nvidia and I like Google and I'm long Apple for sure, it's my largest holding. So for me, I would just buy and hold Apple shares. I think that's better for me. But if you wanna invest a little amount and you're not gonna buy enough to sell your own covered calls and this kind of thing and you just wanna hedge it a little bit, maybe that's a good way to use a product like this. So if you have, let's say you have $10,000 to invest in Tesla, maybe you put $8,000 into the stock and $2,000 into something like TSLY, which will hedge your position a little bit, you know, when it declines, and when it declines, maybe you can use that income to buy more Tesla shares because you're buying at a reduced price. Just some thinking out loud there, but uh, there might be some creative ways to use these yield max funds. But again, if you're long, be long. In summary, I do think that there's probably lots of creative ideas that you could come up with to utilize these yield max funds. But the bottom line is you have to be bullish on the short and long term 
uh, for the underline that you're going to use. So I do use this strategy and uh, I'm going to show you exactly how you can utilize it yourself. I'm going to do a follow-up video. It should be out here very shortly. Do it yourself, yield max, but that's kind of cost prohibitive. And again, you're paying for expertise here. You're paying that 1% for expertise. If you don't want to mess around with it, it's very inexpensive to invest a small amount into these yield max funds versus trying to do it yourself and being on the hook for something. So when we say buy 100 shares of Tesla for $25,000, right, that's, that's very different. And same thing with this synthetic long position. You could be on the hook for quite a bit of money. So it's not going to be for everybody, but uh, that'll be coming out. So if you like that kind of thing, like and subscribe. Now, appreciate you watching this. Any questions, ask down below or email me. doesn't matter. I'll respond, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Whoop. Thank <laughs> you.